Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Ajay Kumar from the Institute of Hotel and Tourism Management, Maharshi Dayanan University, Rohtak, Haryana. Today I am going to deliver the lecture on the module Laundry Operations. That is an important topic for hotel housekeeping. At the end of the module, you will develop an understanding about the concept of laundry. You will be able to discuss the process of laundry. You will also come to know about stain removal and the procedures of removing stain from linen. You will also understand about dry cleaning and the process of dry cleaning. You will be able to define the procedure of handling of guest laundry. Now let us look into laundry operations. The term laundry is used to define a room in a house, hotel or institution where clothes and linen can be washed and ironed. A hotel can operate its laundry services through the following types of laundry. The first type of laundry is commercial or off-site contractual laundry. Uh, these are the laundries which render their services to hotels on contractual basis. It is a very good option for those hotels which do not want to invest a lot of money in the setting up of their own laundry or do not have sufficient space for constructing the laundry in the hotels. A hotel can take the services of the commercial laundry by entering into contract with it. This contract specifies the rate at which the different articles of linens will be laundered and also the time taken for laundering and so on. Usually the soil linen after laundering is returned back to the hotel within 24 to 48 hours. The stained and other linen which require special treatments for cleaning are hold back by the laundries as their cleaning requires more time than the normal soil linen. The laundries generally keep 3 to 5 percent of the soil linen for this purpose. Advantage, now let us look at the advantages of the commercial laundries. The commercial laundries gives uh, a lot of uh, advantages to the hotel property. The cost of labor are saved, uh, little requirement of technical expertise uh, and there is no capital outlay. Uh, besides advantages, it has some disadvantages also like contractual laundries have uh, uh, delays in the collection and deliver of linen. Hotels have very less control over standards. Hotels have to maintain higher stocks of linen as the whole process of cleaning and returning of the linen takes longer time. And there, there are incidents of loss of linen in, increases. Uh, hotel has to bear extra costs for special treatments of the linen. Now let us talk about on premises, on site or inside laundry. They are those laundries which are located within the premises of the hotel. On-site laundries are also called as hotels own laundry. It can be run by the management of the hotel or managed on a contract. They require huge investment of the capital in the beginning. Many hotels offer for this option to provide quality services to guests. In-house laundry gives more care in laundering the linen as all the responsibility now rests on its shoulders. Power stocks are reduced as the in-house laundry takes a maximum of 8 hours to return laundered items. Chances of loss of linen are reduced as the linen do not leave the premises. This facility increases the life of linen as there is better supervision and control than off-premises laundry. However, if an equipment failure occurs, a contingency plan should be ready to cope with this situation. The on-premises laundry has following advantages. It is a capital asset for the hotel. Emergency requirements of linen can be dealt easily its as its laundry cycle is fast. Hence, hotels have to maintain less stocks. Chances of loss of linen articles are reduced. Um, along with advantages, it has some disadvantages also. It increases the cost of labor. One has to do huge initial capital investment for establishing it. It has high cost of maintenance, repairs and overheads. OPL requires special management team or technical expertise for managing it. 
Now let us talk about laundromat. It is also a type of laundry. It is a self-service laundry, coin laundry or coin wash laundry. Generally, it is generally found in motels. They are coil, called coin, coin laundries because they are utilized by used, using coin slots to pay according to the load or by making a fixed monthly payment. Long stay guests of some resorts also utilize this equipment. Uh, now let us talk about the laundry process. The main stages of the laundry process are divided into the following stages. First is the pre-washing, washing, then rinsing, hydro extraction, fin finishing, then pre-washing. The steps undertaken at the pre-washing stage are as follows. <laughs> collection and sorting of soil linen. The GRAs or what uh, we call it them guest room attendants are responsible for the collection and sorting of soil linen. They carry a room attendants cart with them which is has a separate soil linen bag for collecting the soil linen. The GRAs remove the soil linen from beds and public areas and put them directly into this bag. Linen of F and B is kept in hampers for delivery to the laundry. To make the process of sorting easy, the stained linen is knotted in one corner. Soil linen must be sent to the laundry immediately so that stains do not set in. Several hotels send the soil linen to the linen room before sending it to the laundry, where it is sorted, counted and recording. If hotels uses off-site laundry service, then the soil linen is marked in the linen room before being transferred to the off-site laundry. Now trans how the transportation of the soil linen uh, to the laundry takes place, let us see that. To facilitate the movement of the soil linen to the laundry, large hotels consist of a linen chute which moves down the hotel height of the building to the laundry's soil and sort area. Other hotels uses linen carts and laundry sacks for the transportation of the laundry. GRAs should only use those carts that are free of, of protrusions because they could snag or tear items. Uh, now let us talk uh, about sorting, sorting process. Sorting is done in the soil and sort area of the laundry. This area should have adequate space for sorting a day's worth laundry. The soil articles in this section are sorted out according to the following parameters. Firstly, the soil linen is sorted according to the degree of soiling into various categories like stained, whether it is unstained, heavily soiled, medium soiled or lightly soiled articles. The articles are further sorted by color and fastness of dye. They are then sorted according to the type of fiber used in making them. Before washing, the linen which require repair is separated and sent to the tailor who will mend it. And if the article which needs mending is heavily soiled, is first washed and then sent for mending. The linen should be monogrammed before washing so that it can easily be identified and controlled for pilferage. Uh, condemned or discarded linen is separated from the soil linen and cut down before washing. Light linen are also sorted and washed separately. They are linen which ha have lost their standard condition. All fancy accessory and attachments such as rings, buckles, false collars of curtains, etc. should be removed from linen to be washed. One should also keep in mind that all pockets are emptied and folds are checked before washing. <coughs> Weighing and loading. Now the sold uh, sorted articles are weighed while dry. It is a useful step since each washing machine has specific loading instructions which must be followed. Washing, the machines have to be operated according to the manufacturer's instructions for maximum efficiency. One should also vary the temperatures, washing times, uh, processing chemicals on the basis of the type of fabrics being laundered. That, um, now that one has to determine the 
right washing program also. The following parameters depict the proper washing program. The, the first is duration. Um, while choosing the right washing program, one should consider the level of soil on the linen because the more the soil is on the linen, the more time the washing program will take for removing the dirt from the linen. The other factor which must be taken into account is the rate at which the soil is removed from the linen during the washing program. In the beginning of the wash cycle, it is highest and then gets slower with the passage of time. Temperature. The laundry workers usually to save energy select the lowest possible temperature to accomplish their task. But some types of soils need high temperature for the cleaning and some detergents and chemicals perform their action only on high temperature. Hence, one has to keep in mind this factor while selecting the right temperature for the wash cycle. For example, sheets and pillowcases require 95 degrees Celsius washing temperature. Agitation. It is the scrubbing action of the machine. Overloading the washers causes agitation, which contribute to inadequate washing. Hence, one should not overload the washers as it will cause wear and tear in the equipment too. Now the chemicals. Uh, one should also decide on the chemicals um, that will be used in washing. These are some, there are some chemical works uh, which works best on particular types of fabric. Uh, hardness of water. Hard water consists of salts uh, which upon mixing with the soap and synthetic detergents form a sticky substance known as soap cut, which gets deposited on the laundry and makes articles stiff. And the number of wash cycle, it is in the another parameter. Mm -hmm. It is better to take several shorter washes than one long one, mm -hmm. because clean water and freshly made up suits remove more soil than long wash, wash cycle. There are nine steps in a typical wash cycle which are as follows. The first is flush. This step is of 130 to 3 minutes. Water level is kept high and the articles are flushed at medium temperature. It is done to reduce the soil load for the next suit steps as these conditions are ideal for dissolving and diluting water soluble salts. Break. This step is of 4 to 10 minutes. In this step, the water is kept at lower levels and the cycle is carried out at medium temperature. The addition of a high alkaline break product is done in this step. Suits. This step is of 5 to 8 minutes. The detergent is added in the cycle at this step. Now the articles are moved in hot water at low water levels. Intermediate rinse or uh, carry over suits. Uh, it is of 2 to 5 minutes. This cycle makes the uh, action of bleach more effective by removing the soil and alkanity from the linen. Like soot cycle, it is also rinses linen at the same temperature. Bleach, it is of 5 to 8 minutes. Bleach, when used, is added to hot water at a low water level. Bleach is used for cleaning bacteria whitening fibers and removing stains. The duration of rinse cycle is 130 to 3 minutes. Soil and detergent is removed from the linen by giving two or more rinses at medium temperature and high water levels. Intermediate extract. It, this step is of 130 to 2 minutes. At this step, the remaining detergent and soil from the linen are removed by the high speed spin. One should keep a gap between this cycle and suit step as it could drive back soils into the fabrics. And one should not also not use this cycle or on non-iron linen or non we, we call the non-iron linen also. So next step is sore, softener, starch. It is of three to five minutes. The fabrics are conditioned at this step by adding sores and softener. This cycle is run at a medium temperature and at low water levels. Cotton fibrics are stiffened by adding starches, 
now the final extract it is of 2 to 12 minutes this step is carried out by a high speed spin for removing linen moisture the duration of the spin depends on the capacity of the extractor fabric type and speed of the extractor rinsing it is done by using hot and cold water next step is hydro extraction with the help of this step 50 percent of the water used in the rinsing process is removed hence it not only decreases the drying time as well as the load of the laundry as well uh, which in turn prevents creases from setting into fabrics <coughs> finishing in the laundry cycle this stage is made up of the following processes uh, first is drying the items which are needed to be dried after hydro extraction are towels wash clothes and some no iron line these temperatures and drying items vary according to the type of linen rapid cooling and handling should be done to prevent the hot linen from being damaged or wrinkled after drying one should quickly remove the linen for folding the next step is iron towels do not need iron whereas sheets pillowcases tablecloths and napkins are ironed in flat work irons different steam presses are used for finishing uniforms and guest clothing sheets pillowcases uh, tablecloths and napkins are pressed in flat work irons now the next step is folding it could be done by hand or with the help of machines <coughs> folding personnel must inspect the linen before folding the linen and it should he should remove those items uh, which are not properly laundered torn and are unsuitable for laundering folding should be done well away from the stored linen area to avoid resorting clean laundry <coughs> then now the next step is storing at this stage the items are again sorted before stacking uh, post uh, sorting helps the in eradicating any odd linen items that were missed in the pre sorting step in the storage area there should be adequate space for storing at least one pair of linen after laundering uh, finished items uh, should be kept on shelves for 20 hours for hours because washing tend to damage linen more easily keeping the linen all shelves also helps to figure out the yellowing and fading of linen transferring as the name indicates in this step the fresh and laundered articles are transported via carts to their respective areas of use now stain removal um, a stain can be defined as a spot or localized dislocation left on the fabric by the reaction with or absorption of foreign substance it is also known as spot cleaning it is a skill that requires eye for detail specific techniques and long experience uh, while removing steams the following factors are needed to be kept in mind and the first is the color and composition of the fabric the nature and the age of the steam um, the general procedure of steam removal the steps to be followed for removing the steams from fabric are as follows first is identify the steam second is classify the steams and then uh, you have to select the regions to be used uh, then you need to select the procedure to be used and you have to proceed step by step for removing steams first is identification of steams the selection of regions and procedures to be followed for the removal of stains are decided in this step. Stains can be identified on the basis of the color, texture or order. Color. By seeing the color of the stain, one can easily tell about the stain. For example, a red cell may be the result of ink, tomato, nail or polish, blood or some medicine. Similarly, a yellow stain may be due to turmeric gravy medicines or mangoes texture surface of the stain also gives an idea about the type of stain for example hard surface of the stain could be due to egg and soft surface may be due to oil ghee lipstick etc order some stains have characteristic span which help in the identification of the stain this panel can be smelled by rubbing one's fingers 
on the surface of the stain and then smelling the fingers and the stain. Classification of stains. Stains may be classified into different groups and the single stain can be grouped into more than one class. The various classes of the stains are as follows. First is animal stains. These are caused by animal products such as blood, eggs, milk, meat, etc. Vegetable stains. These stains are caused by the plant product like tea, coffee, juice, tomato, gravy, etc. Grease. Grease or some pigmented matter with a grease piece account for these stains. Butter, ghee, oil, paint, varnish, tar, car, grease, etc. all are the example of this type of class. Now mineral stain. They are formed by writing ink, medicines, dye stuffs, rust and so on. Metalloid stains. An example of this class of stains is iodine, iodine tincture. Now acidic stains, vinegar, urine, perspiration and medicines containing nitric acid, picric acid etc are example of acidic stains. Um, basic or alkaline stains, per perspiration, urine are common example of this type of stain. Natural dyes and pigments, hina, bitter leaf, tobacco, chocolate, coffee, tea etc are included in this class. Synthetic dyes and pigments. Its common examples are hair dyes, markers, typewriter ribbons, and watercolors. Sugar solutions with coloring matters. Jams, jellies, soft drinks, syrups, and puddings are the common examples of this class. Now, miscellaneous. The stains which do not fall, fall into any class are included into this class. For example, mud, mildew, scorching, etc. Now classification of stain removal processes. The procedures of stain removal are classified in the following way. First is the by mode of action. Stain removal procedures are categorized into five categories according to the mode of action of the stain. First is removal agent, solvent action, water or organic solvent are used for dissolving out the stain. Mechanical and emulsifying action. It removes the stain without dissolving it. Chemical action. Hair oxidation or reduction reaction makes an insoluble stain colorless and soluble and then it can be washed out of the fabric. Digestion. In this enzyme containing products are used as pre socks or in detergents to break down the stain into soluble substances that can be reached out. Absorption. Certain powders such as fuller's earth are able to absorb or absorb greases and oils by mode of application. On the basis of the mode of application of the stain removal agent, uh, the process may be categorized into following type. First is drop method. The stain part of the fabric is stretched over a basin and small drops of the stain removal agent are poured on it with a glass rod or drop plow, drop off. Uh, then dip method. The stained area of the fabric is filled with the stain removal solution. It is the most appropriate method when the stain is large or if there, if there are many spots spread across the fabric. Steam method. Stains on wool, silk or an any colored fabric can be removed by steaming. The stained area is saturated with steam area, is saturated uh, with steam by spreading the cloth over a basin half filled with hot water into which a small amount of the appropriate removal agent has been placed. <coughs> Sponge method. The stain removal agent is applied on the stained area of the fabric with a sponge. It is the most widely used method of stain removal. Absorption method. In this method, the soil part of the fabric is placed on a sheet of blotting paper. The absorbent paper is spread on the soil area, rubbed in lightly and allowed to absorb or absorb the grease. This method can also be carried out by applying a paste of the absorbent paper, letting it sit and then scrapping of the paste, spotting. For removing stains, laundries employ specialist agents known as spotters. 
they possess detailed knowledge of the fabrics and dye steps. They know about the working of various chemicals on stains, fabrics and dyes. They also have the skills and techniques required for handling various chemicals and removing stains from different types of fabrics without damaging the material. Dry cleaning. It is the process of fabrics in a substantially known aqueous liquid. By the application of detergents and various other agents, it removes oils as well as many other water soluble and insoluble material. Process of dry cleaning. First is marking. Soil linen is sent to the marking area. Here the linen is given individual number or code which helps the laundry in identification of the sting. Then sorting. Here the garments are divided into six major groups and each group is kept in a different hamper. Each hamper contains only one class of garments and can hold a weight of 45 kilograms. The clothes are sorted in following six major groups. White and light colored clothes, dark colored woolens, dark colored clothes, drapery and furniture co covers. White and light colored woolens. In this we have rain coats. At this stage the excess of dirt is brushed, pockets are checked and fancy accessories such as buttons, buckles are removed. Now the application of absorbents. To remove grease from all kind of materials, absorbents are applied. The commonly used absorbents are French chalk, moon powder, fuller's earth, bran and commercial powder sold in perforated top tins. Now pre-spotting. Solvents are applied to heavily soiled area of the linen. Different types of soil vents are applied for cleaning different types of stain like airborne stains are removed by applying volatile dry solvents such as amyl acetate while paint and varnish stains are treated with non-volatile solvents and so on. Pre-spotters with spotting guns are used for spraying the solvent on the soiled area. Cleaning Approximately 45 kg load of soil linen is transferred to the dry cleaning cylinder. At first, very delicate linen is placed in the net bag first. Um, a suitable solvent is circulated through the clothes. The contact time of the clothes with the solvent and the rinse time changes according to the rate of the flow of the solvent, uh, the type and the size of the workload as well. It can vary from uh, 5 to 45 minutes depending on fabric composition and degree of soiling. Extraction Revolving perf uh, perforated cylinder of the tumbler applies centrifugal force and removes ex extra solvent. Modern dry cleaning machines perform the cleaning and extraction tasks in the same cylinder. Drying Now the garments are dried in a dryer which has a perforated drum enclosed in a tumbler. For drying the clothes, hot air is passed through the clothes and sucked out by an exhaust fan. The temperature is kept at 40 degrees Celsius. Filtering and distillation of the solvents. Uh, solvents are very costly as they are filtered out, distilled and reused. Inspection. Inspection of each article is done at this stage. If any spores or stains are found, the and then the garments are sent back for respotting. Finishing. At this stage, the garment is uh, tried uh, to restore to its original speed, shape, uh, feel, size, and appearance. The clean garments are then pressed. Pressing is the costliest operation in dry cleaning. Packing. Buttons and buckles uh, which were removed earlier are stitched back again. Finally, the garments are packed in paper or hanged in cloth hangers covered with polythene bag. Now they are ready for the delivery of guests to guests. Handling guest laundry. Handling of the guest laundry is one of the most important responsibility of the housekeeping department. It must ensure that guest laundry is picked up on time, 
laundered and returned back to the guests on time. Generally, the guest laundry is collected in the morning and delivered back in the same evening. Laundry list. All guest rooms of hotel are supplied with laundry bags and laundry lists. The guest places the soiled clothes in the laundry bag, fills the laundry form with all the necessary details and makes a call to the housekeeping department for the collection of his soiled clothes. The valets should check the room for laundry even if the guest has not made a call. The valets check the clothes against the list and transfers them to the linen room. The clothes are checked for any repairs needed and stray items left in the pocket. The linen is marked or tagged and the details are recorded to avoid misplacement. Washing, dry cleaning or ironing is done as per the request of the guest. Prior to ironing, resorting of the clothes is done according to room numbers. After ironing, the clothes are packed and returned back to the guest rooms with the counterfoil of the laundry list. Items which were found in the pockets are deliver delivered to the guests along with the laundry. Laundry bills are sent to the officer office where they are added to the master's bill. Valet service. Most hotels provide valet service for the movement of guest laundry. They collect the guest laundry from guest room. They matches the contents of the laundry bag with the laundry list which is placed in the laundry bag along with clothes by the guest. The valet requests the guest to rectify the mistake. If the list does not match with the clothes, valets also return back the guest laundry to guests as per their requirement. Now, at last, uh, let us sum up. Uh, we can now we can see that in any hotel establishment, a lot of dirty linen accumulates in the various units and departments. It is essential to ensure a continuous supply of linen which is well laundered so that operation can be carried out smoothly and efficiently. Linen is an expensive item so how it will be laundered requires a serious consideration. Hence the staff of a housekeeping department must be well versed with the various operation of the laundry with like a laundry process, handling of guest laundry, steam removal and dry cleaning and so on. Thank you.